Hey guys, Alton here. I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel and welcome you back to our series where we're learning about Linux fundamentals for ethical hacking. So today's video is going to be our fourth installment of this series where I'm going to teach back to you guys what I'm learning as I learn ethical hacking. So what are we going to cover in today's video? Well, I'm going to show you a command called sudo, which is short for super user do, and it allows you to do super user or in other words for those of you who are that are familiar with the windows administrative accounts from your standard user account however if you're in a test lab environment and you're going to be running all sorts of different commands that require privilege escalation up to your super user account well you don't want to have to type in sudo all the time well in Kali version 2020.1 the root account isn't completely set up. We have to set up its password. So I'm going to show you how to do that from the command line. So we're going to cover that. I'm going to go over the sudo command and I'm going to show you how to set up your root account's password so you can log in with root and just simply use that account in your testing environment where you're learning ethical hacking. So let's go ahead, let's switch over to my computer and let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. What I did with my Kali machine is I converted it back to the clean install snapshot. So this is a clean installation of Kali Linux 2020.1. And what we wanna do in this video is I wanna focus on a couple of things. We're gonna learn some additional commands and some other things in here just because I'm gonna use them to demonstrate some things. But really what I wanna focus in on this video is setting up Kali's root password. So if you remember from a previous video for Kali Linux version 2020.1, the default user is Kali. And that user is a non-administrator or a non-super user. It's just a standard user. And a lot of the things that you'll be learning as you learn Linux basics requires you to have super user access. And there's two ways to do that. You can either be logged in as root, or you can use something called the super user do command, which is sudo. So let's go ahead and let's demonstrate that. So let me go ahead and open up terminal and let's just run a very basic command. So if you're familiar with windows to look up your IP configuration, you would do an IP config. Well, in Linux, it's IF config. And you'll notice that if I run IF config in here, it's not going to output anything because to run that, we have to have a super user ability. So we need to escalate or elevate our privileges up to administrator level privileges. So we have to type in sudo and then if config. And it's going to ask us for our password for Kali. And now it shows us our IP configuration stuff right here. Now, if you're wondering why the Kali account is allowed to escalate or elevate its privileges up to super user privileges, well, there's a file within Linux that you can tell Linux which accounts are able to do that and which accounts aren't able to do that. And in terms of just general best practices when it comes to computing, we don't want to be logged in with an administrative account or in other words, a super user account unless we need to. We prefer to be logged in with an account that is a standard account. So somebody hacks into our system, they don't have access to do anything and everything that they want to. And also for us, we don't accidentally screw something up. But if you're in a lab testing environment like I am right now, learning Linux basics and ethical hacking, it's preferable not to have to type in sudo for all sorts of different commands. Now let's do another example. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out the screen. And since I went ahead and I did inform you of a different command, I'm just going to go ahead and add it to the list over here. So we'll just type in other commands we covered. So let me go ahead and make sure my formatting is similar to those. So we did if config and this command allows you to view your, I'm just going to say basic IP configuration information on your system. Very basic command. 
let's do another one. So we're gonna do net discover. And this will allow us to do a scan and discover other systems on our network. So other systems on our network. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run this one and what you would do is we're gonna do dash R that tells us we're gonna do an entire IP range and on my network I'm on a 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network. This is telling us for those of you that aren't that familiar with IP addressing, this is a standard private class C network with a subnet mask that's a slash 24 subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. So if I run this without be, being a super user or not doing sudo, well, it's not gonna run it. So we have to do sudo net discover dash r, put in our IP range slash 24, and now it will run. Now this takes a while to run, so I'm not going to let this continue to run. To cancel out of this, you just do control plus C and then it'll cancel out of that. So those are some additional commands. Another example of this is let's go ahead and let's back out of here to the root directory and let's do a print working directory just to show you exactly where we are. We are in the root directory and let's do an ls slash l to look at all the other subdirectories. So let's say that I wanted to open a file in one of the other directories and edit. Well, from the command prompt, there is the nano editor. So this is a, com I'm just gonna say terminal editor that allow us to edit files from the terminal. So let's say that I wanted to do that. Again, what you're gonna notice in a second is that if I don't do sudo, well, I can't edit it. So let's go to the etc folder, so cd etc. Let's do an ls-l again to look at the contents. And let's just go ahead and open up one of the config files. And so with nano, you just type in nano and the name of the file. So let's just do ucf.config. What you're gonna notice is that it opens up the file here in nano, but down here at the bottom, it says that this is unwritable. Why? Because we're not a super user, so we can't do anything. To get out of here, we see the caret that would be control, so control X, and that's gonna close out nano. Now let's solve this problem so we don't have to use sudo all the time. And just to show you that sudo does work for this as well, we'll just go ahead and put sudo in with that and now we can actually edit this. I'm not going to edit it, so I am just wanted to show you that, but I'm going to do control X to get out of there and let's clear the screen. And now let's walk through the process of setting up our root password. So like I said, remember that by default, with Kali version 2020.1, and I believe also um, the previous edition 2019, the username is also Kali Kali by default and not root and Tor. What you're gonna notice is if we open up, and let me see which one, here we go. If we open up a folder and if we look at the file system, you're gonna notice that there is under home, this is our Kali users, home folder, but there's also one called root. And we can not access it because we don't have access with this account. But what you're gonna notice is once we set up our root password, so the account is set up, but the password's not set up, so we can't access it directly, what we're gonna be able to do is we'll log in as root and we'll have access to this because root's home folder is actually here, whereas everybody else is under home and under the actual name of the username. And so you're gonna see all these different folders under root as well. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So I'm back in command prompt. So what we're gonna do in terminal is we're gonna issue the command sudo su, which means sudo super user. Now we are in the super user. Now we wanna type in password root, P-A-S-S-W-D, R-O-O-T, 
And now what we can do is we can type in the password for root. So just type in a password. I'll just go ahead and type in T-O-O-R, so the exact opposite of root. And do it again and hit enter and now it's set up. Now when you enter this command, you may be prompted to enter the password for Kali. So mine didn't prompt me for it this time, but you may get asked to do that. If you do, just go ahead and enter the password for Kali and then it'll allow you to run through this process. So now that we've set up for the password for root, we can go ahead and we can restart the system. We can actually probably just log out of it and then log in. So let's log out and let's log back in under root. And there we go. Now we're logged in as root. And let me go ahead and take a snapshot. So I'm going to say just saying that I created the password for the root account. So now after this saves, if we go into the file system and let me go ahead and make this full screen for the virtual machine. It says, warning, you are now using a root account. You may harm your system. So in other words, we have access to everything. We're a super user. Now we click in here and everything that you saw under home slash Kali, well, exact same folder structure here under root. And if we close this, we go into our terminal shell, print working directory, our home directory is slash root. If we do an ls slash l, you'll notice here's all those folders and those commands I talked about if I clear out of here. So if I do an if config now, voila, we can run it without any issues. If I want to do a net discover, do the same range of my network. And of course I have numlock off. So let me go ahead and start that over. 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Go ahead and it runs it. One other cool thing, I'll go ahead and let this run. If we click actions, we can split our terminal. So I can split it horizontally and have another one over here. If I click on either one of these for the active, I can actually split it again. So I can say action, split it vertically. I can have multiple different terminal sessions, shell sessions up in here at the same time. So we can have multiple different commands. So that's a great thing. And so let's go ahead and let's back out of here and let's do print working directory. So we're in the root directory. Let's go to our ETC folder. Uh, let's do an LS slash L down here. And now let's do nano and let's go into that same config file, ufc.c. O and F type enter and now we can edit this because we are already set up as a super user so let me go ahead and control X to get out of there and that just shows you this shows you the benefit of setting up your root accounts password when you're just doing exploration like I am where you're learning the fundamentals of Linux when you're learning ethical hacking and you're doing all sorts of different commands that aren't always going to work with a non-admin account. So if you don't want to have to do the pseudo command all the time for lots of different commands, then you can go ahead and set this up. But if you're fine with doing that, then by all means, just stay under the Kali account. And like I said, on a production machine, that's going to be best practices anyways. You're not going to want to be logging in all the time with the root account. But, you know, for the purposes of what I'm teaching back here as I'm learning Linux for ethical hacking and sharing that knowledge with you, I think it's perfectly fine in a test lab environment where we're setting up our own little sandbox lab and we're just testing on our own virtual machines and maybe some also physical machines in our home network. So anyways, that's going to conclude this video. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys taking your time to watch my videos and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys at future videos. Take care.